Okay, cool. So I, I want to go to First Corinthians 13 and 9, and I want to get your understanding of, of what that what, what you think that means. You said First Corinthians what? Uh, 13 and 9. 13 and 9, and what's um, what is this about? It says, for we know in part. Mm -hmm. And we uh, prophesy and, in and part. We, and we prophesy in part. Okay. And then if you want, we can jump down to verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly. So mm -hmm. it, when Paul says we see through a glass darkly, mm -hmm. that's in, he's including himself, right? Yeah, so he's saying we know those that are in the truth. He's saying we know in part and we prophesy in part. So um, what will happen is I guess World War Three might be the best example. So yeah. in in the 80s, what happened to Russia? Um, it got broken up, right? The USSR, right? It exactly. So Russia fell. So in the 80s, the ISUPK, well, we, we've been doing this since before Russia even fell. But in the 80s, we were saying Russia is going to come back. We knew in part, and you know what I'm saying? And we prophesy in part. The reason why we knew in part was because we you can't see it when it's right up close. Why? Because Russia just fell. So we're prophesying in part because we know Russia's going to come back because in Ezekiel it said the hook shall be put in his mouth. And then it says, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Meaning what's perfect? The prophecy's perfect. And we know the per the prophecy's perfect because it comes true. So when it's true, it's right in front of our face. It's here. So that means that the part is done away with because it's being fulfilled. Okay. And, uh -huh. Okay, cool. So I would have to agree. So mm -hmm. is it possible that I could read through the epistles of Paul mm -hmm. and we can show where... He didn't have the full understanding. You could you could read through the entire New Testament and see where the disciples didn't have the full understanding. Um, and then you can see where they got it. Like, for example, th there was a reason why Paul had to go withstand Peter to his face because Peter didn't understand the mission to the Gentiles that Paul did in the beginning. There was a reason why they were still doing water baptism. And then that's why in Ephesians, he said there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Because when you read in Acts, the 19th chapter, he runs into brothers from Ephesus and they're like, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. So that's why the whole point of the comforter was like, like how many times did Christ talk to the disciples? And then he was like, you're not going to understand this now, but you'll understand it later. Or Christ will say something and the disciples, it says, you know, and none understood what was said. Right. But you like know, uh -huh. but before he left, um, you remember where he said he opened up the, in Luke, he opened up the scriptures to the Moses, to the writings and the prophets and gave them all the understanding. Right. So basically what I'm saying is, is when Yahweh Shai left planet Earth, he didn't leave them. Obviously, they had the comforter, too. Right. But they had a, a they had the doctrine locked down pack i would say right the 12 disciples did i wouldn't i wouldn't say that because remember um i believe it was it, rem okay remember later on if they had it down pat then why did the most high have to give peter a vision in acts the 10th chapter for well, him to uh, for him to understand about cornelius on, why? On, i mean okay, i mean let me rephrase that what i mean is is that when matthew 19 how do we get salvation that doctrine was perfectly clear. There was no misinterpreting uh, how to get salvation. To get salvation is keep the commandments of God and the faith in Christ. Right? Okay. What Christ said was solid, but that doesn't mean that they understood it. Because remember, Christ said that in Matthews 19. And then a couple of chapters later, one of his mans completely betrayed him and Peter denied him three times. But then after Peter denied him three times, you know, the scripture says that a just man falls seven, but gets up eight. He, he went on to you understand to lead the church. So you, you don't you don't want to look at it as if they understood everything directly. You know what I'm saying? Christ understood everything directly. And as time goes on, you see them get it together. OK. And uh, I want to address the chat. I do not eat swine. Don't you bear false witness on me. I do not justify transgressing the law 
So well, you guys should understand a whole matter first and then rebuke. So now well, I want to get back with you. Well, I don't I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about, but you could no, talk. I know. I know. Like you'll, I said, see, you'll see in the live chat later. I got they, you, but we're not they we're real not, spicy. They talk I got you. We, we ain't got to pay attention to the chat right now, brother. Me and you is talking. Did I say you eat pork? Uh, your followers are saying that. I, I'm, I mean, I, I, this is what I'm saying, but did I say it? Like yeah, me? That's why I, w- I was just addressing them, not you. I, I got you, brother. I, I, w- I wouldn't want anybody to say that I eat pork either. But then um, one other thing, too, I just uh, before we go anywhere else, I just saw um, since you mentioned that I want to read First Corinthians 13 and 12 when it says, for we see through a glass darkly. Do you know what a glass is? Uh, I would say like almost how he uses it. Does he use it like a focal lens or a mirror, like a mirror? More, more more like a focal lens like if you've ever seen a spyglass like you know when you're on a ship and you pull out that like mono ocular you know what i'm right. saying like that's that's um that's like an old quaker english word for a glass you know what i'm saying something that you use to see like a binocular you know what i'm saying so it says for we see through a glass darkly meaning we look through the glass and we can't really make it out all the way but then once it's face to face now i know in part but then shall I know even as also I am known, meaning once it comes all the way full, that's when the imparts done away with. That's when we no longer see through a glass darkly. So this scripture isn't about not knowing. This scripture is about knowing and it's about waiting for the prophecy to come to pass, prophesying in part and then knowing more as you get closer to it. So we would agree then that obviously like every man um, because we are we are men, flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. We understand that because even Paul in that same, he says, as a child, I thought as a child, but when I got older, I spake as a man, I understood like a man. Basically, how the 12 disciples were early on, they didn't have everything figured out. But as they continue to grow in their walk, um, a lot more understanding was given to them. That's fair to say, right? That's that's definitely fair to say. And and we see that all throughout the scriptures, which is why we still see them doing things like water baptism, which is why we see, uh, like I said a minute ago, the example with Peter and Cornelius. And then as time goes on, everything gets fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? And then hold on. And then things also go left, because by the time you get to Revelations, the second chapter, you know, what I'm saying the angels are getting checked for, for some of the churches being out of order. You know what I'm saying? But. Paul also said heresies must come. Right. So so that's a piece of it. Okay. So um, Peter went off for a second, right? A couple of times, right? Peter and And everything. Like David, like King David went off. Moses went off. All of the greatest, the great Micah, he said, um, I will sit in darkness. Or he said, I will sit and wait for the Lord because he has judged me. I forget the passage, but he says, I will sit and wait for the Lord because I have sinned against him, right? We see that our forefathers transgress. That's nothing new. Moses transgressed. Moses got shit wrong. Yeah, so and, we, and we, we, see see, Peter, uh, we see Peter doing the same thing, right? Well, we, we've seen moments of it, and we've seen where Christ had to check Peter, you know, get from around me, Satan. Or he says that, you know, before the, b- before the cock uh, crows thrice, ye shall betray me. But then but then we also see him, you understand, stepping directly into the role of running the church. Then we see him directly stepping into the role of becoming the elder he was always supposed to be. So basically nothing's flawless. You know, we're 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 all trying to get to the kingdom. Um, And sometimes people make mistakes. Uh, Moses made mistakes. Uh, The prophets made mistakes. Peter made mistakes. Do you believe that Paul made mistakes? I mean, you'd have to show me the mistake that he made. I mean, we know prior to him, I guess, quote unquote, what Christians would call his conversion or, you know, when he woke up, you know, what I'm saying he was in the world doing the wrong thing. But you know we saying? see Peter. Hold on. I, I, I'm Peter. sorry. Brother, I didn't I didn't interrupt you a minute ago. You, you're right. You're going to suck your teeth. Or you mind if I talk on my own show? Is that all right? OK, so, you know, what I'm saying so. You could definitely see people, you know what I'm saying, making mistakes. But what, what, I guess this is my question to you then. So what mistake do you think Paul made? Well, I just want to get this cleared out. Uh, people saying that I hate Paul. I don't have hatred in my heart for none of my brothers. Well, could you talk to me and not the chat? All right, cool. So basically what I'm saying is, is we can read where Moses, mm-hmm. the, the transfiguration, we already have the authority. You have Christ, 
Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. then you have Moses, the law, and then you have the prophets in that order. Okay. And we, and we see that all of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, we can see their errors. Now, Peter, we see his error before he was truly converted. And then we see his errors after he's converted and he's running the whole church. So I just want to see if we see through a glass darkly, nobody's perfect, and we can read about the head disciples making mistakes. Do we find this guy, Paul, who came after the fact? Do we read anywhere in the epistles or anywhere where he made a mistake? So That's a genuine question I want to ask. And and this this is my question to you. So like I pointed out specifics with Peter. So could you show me something with Paul that you have an issue with? Okay, cool. Um, let's go over here to Acts 15. Okay. <clears throat> Acts 15 and what? We can just get some context. Mm -hmm. Um uh, 15 verse 5. We can start there. Okay. Um, so it says, But there rose up certain of the sect of Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Verse 6. And the apostles and elders came together to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know... How that a good while ago, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Okay. Verse mm -hmm. eight. And God, which knoweth the heart, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. And as he did unto us. Mm -hmm. Now we got the context. Let's jump down to verse 20. This is the council. It says, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled, right? Mm -hmm. And from blood. Mm -hmm. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So Paul made a mistake here or he, he, he went against the council. The council was there are restrictions on what you can eat and there's restrictions on things that you cannot eat. Okay. And Paul went against that. Okay. Where did he go against that? Okay. Let's go over here to first Corinthians. Before we go to first Corinthians, are you saying that he did that in Acts? I just want to understand where you're coming from. Or you no, say so that after 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 he received the counsel mm -hmm. from the elders, mm -hmm. he goes on his journey. Mm -hmm. A couple months go by, he's in Corinth mm -hmm. or wherever he's at, and he's writing a letter, an epistle to them. Okay. Now, would you agree that everything written in the epistles is thus saith the Lord? Or do you believe that some things are and some things is just wisdom? Um, it would depend. Like if you see like Paul saying, I speak as a man, that's his opinion. You know what I'm saying? But if you see things, you know what I'm saying, that he's teaching as far as doctrine, these are things that Christ taught. So it would depend on the context. I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like all of this is for us to learn from. So all of this is from the Lord. So if, when he said, oh, do you mind if I finish my sentence, brother? So, so when you see, when you see things of that na nature, all of this is from the Lord, but it's just a matter of if it's law or not at the same time. Like there's certain things he said that wasn't law, but it was wisdom for you to be able to, you know, do X, Y, Z in the fashion that he said. But now, so, so this is a little separate. So you're saying that they have this council. This is a, this is a command that was given. And now we're in what Corinthians? First Corinthians. First Corinthians. And we're we'll going there. that it seems like Paul is going against the council that was given him. Okay. So let's find would out. would be a mistake. Like okay. just how Peter made a mistake. So let's go to no sweat, brother. You understand? Calm down. First Corinthians. What? Uh, we can go, we can start at verse, uh, I mean, chapter eight. Okay, chapter. Um, but but to address uh, a little bit of what I said concerning wisdom, and is everything that he said, thus saith the Lord. What what about when he said it is good for a man not to touch a woman? Is that 
a commandment or is that wisdom? This is this is when he turned around and he said that I speak as a man and he was letting you know that in this work, it would be better if you didn't marry just like Christ didn't. No, he, in verse seven, verse seven, he doesn't say um, that. He, uh, chapter, literally, chapter, he, he literally, seven, verse one, he doesn't he, say li that. he literally, that's literally what he says throughout the entire seventh chapter, which is why I'm trying to say there's no law for you to not marry. But he, but now who didn't marry? Christ didn't marry, correct? Uh, correct. Why didn't he marry? Um, because he wanted to make himself a eunuch to the most high. Because he put the work before anything. Because if you have a wife, if you have a child, these things are not only things that can distract you. They're not only things that you have to take care of, you have to take care for, but Christ is traveling. He's doing all these different things. Christ put the work of the Lord first. When Paul says that, he's saying it'd be better for you not to marry because who else didn't marry? Christ. So when he's saying that, he's giving you wisdom if you want to take the work of the Lord serious. Hold on. There's somebody else. Um, you can stay on mute for a second. I'm going to bring you on the stage. I'm going to finish this last point and then... Um, you're going to have to tell me how to pronounce your name, brother. You know what I'm saying? And then and then I'll come back to you. So that's not a law, but that is a wise thing to do if you want to serve the Lord, because how did Solomon go off? I got you. But no, I just, just, just come on, bro. Uh, you, I've been answering your questions. You know how he went off. He, he got multiple wives. Uh, it's not about he got multiple wives. Got way too many. It's not about him having way too many. You understand, but women. The law says he, he shall not heap unto himself wives, and that's literally what he did. That, that's that's not what happened. He sir, he got women from another nation, and he served their gods. He went down from woman. How did they, how did David fail? He committed adultery. How did Adam fail? Uh, the woman. So if you're trying to dedicate your life to God, wouldn't you say that? Since I mean, I don't know about you, I believe King David to be a better man than me. You understand? I I I look at these brothers and I, and I, I believe Christ is a better man than me. Wouldn't it be a wise thing if you're trying to take the 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 work of the Lord serious for you to not get a woman? No, I listen. That's not my argument. All I'm just saying is that when you look at chapter seven in First Corinthians, he doesn't necessarily preface what he's about to say when he says, "I speak as a man." When you look at chapter seven, verse one, he just starts speaking as a man. He doesn't let you know. And I'm, and I'm trying to say that he does that multiple times. He'll just speak as a man. The it's con not just say it the Lord. The, so con the context is in the chapter. And not only is the context in the chapter, but we know what the law is. So what he's writing on to you, because here's something else, too. He's writing on to different areas. You know what I'm saying? So, like, like I think I think Paul was so intelligent. Like, you ever noticed that the style of, of every letter is different? Like, how he wrote to Rome is different than how he wrote to Corinth? Yeah, because it's I think some of them are later on in, in time. That's my whole argument is that Paul made mistakes early on and then he corrected it later on. Uh, OK, so this is this is this is what I'm going to say. This is my this is the ISUPK stance on it. Paul said that he became all things onto all men in order to relate to them. So he found a way to relate with the Corinthians. He found a way to relate with the Romans. He found a way to relate with the Galatians. And in all of those writing styles, he wrote differently in a met like the way that I talk to, you know, a, a, a somebody on the block is different than how I talk to somebody at a university. Like my, 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 my dialect changes, you know what I'm saying? My slang changes, all of that, because it's relatability. Paul had that gift. Paul wasn't a hammer. He was a Swiss army knife. You know what I'm saying? He was able to do that. But I, I do have somebody else who's trying to get in. Uh, so we didn't. We, okay. Well, can well, I wait? But, but listen, for your point, I'm, 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 your point was to take me to Corinthians uh, 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 chapter eight. So what happened in chapter eight? Uh, he went against the uh, he went against the council uh, that they gave in Acts 15, where they told them to abstain from pollutions of idols and things that are strangled. Okay, so could you okay, show so me when you go when you go when you go into his epistles mm -hmm. you would have to show that when Paul mentions meat M E A T all meat and he says all meat you the burden of proof is on you to prove that that's only talking about clean foods because what does Peter say? Peter says people read his epistles unto their own destruction. He had to get brought back to the Jerusalem Council because there were rumors going around across all of our people, across the whole modern world, that this guy 
was teaching to transgress the law. So clearly everybody was under the impression that this guy was teaching against the law. So we, and, I, and there's proof of that when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, okay? And you have to prove that when Paul says all meat or eat whatever is sold in the shambles, you have to prove that that's only talking about clean meat because he doesn't, he doesn't clarify that. So that's how people are going to stumble. That's why people read his epistles and they stumble. Okay, so this is this is first thing I'm going to do, right? Um, before I give you the, the proof that you're looking for in response to everything that you said, is first thing I'm going to do is actually read the scripture that you butchered. So this is 2 Peter 3 and 15. And it says, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. First of all, he's calling him beloved brother Paul. Also, according to the wisdom given to him, hath written, hath, excuse me, unto him hath written unto you. As, all, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them these things, which, in so, which are some things hard to be understood. You don't understand, Paul, brother, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, meaning you wrestle with it because you are unlearned and unstable. So you don't understand him as they do other scriptures, not because of Paul onto their own destruction, meaning just like you don't understand Paul. There's other scriptures you don't understand onto your own destruction, which is why when I ask you something simple, like how did Solomon fall? You say because of multiple wives, multiple wives is not a sin, but you wrestle with that and stumble onto your own destruction. How does that? How does that? So now back to, hold, that. hold on, hold on brother. This don't. whole, this whole, this whole thing. Listen, don't say don't do that when you started by calling up the show and saying, yeah, and I body bagged Captain Tazariak, like. What are you talking about? That's what we do. Like you're crossing the line right now and we are having a respectful dialogue, but I, I disagree with you. So because I disagree with you, I'm going to break this down and say that you are the size 10 and a half shoe that this scripture fits perfectly. Now, I didn't interrupt you a moment ago. So let me finish to the first part that you said. The first part that you said was I'd have to show you where Paul was talking about this. Paul said this. Paul said I speak to them who know the law. If you come to my house and you know I'm an Israelite, I'm a practicing Israelite, I do not eat pork. Anybody who comes to my house, brothers come in from all over the country sometimes and I, I open up my doors and this way they can stay and I make breakfast. And I say, you, I, I say I'm about to make a bacon, egg and cheese. You want bacon? Nobody thinks I'm talking about pork. If they need any clarification, they're going to say, is it beef? And I'm going to say, no, nah, I got turkey bacon because that's all that I eat is either beef or turkey bacon. But because what if you were I, among the Gentiles? What if you were among the Gentiles? I am literally among the Gen I'm in America. I'm constantly surrounded around people Gentiles. who don't know people who don't know what we know. People who are just new. But people here's just, but here. But here's and this is this is what I'm trying to explain to you. Right. Paul, so you, you can't are, tell them everything you know, in the shambles. You just, you just you just you just asked a question. I'm trying to respond. As I respond, you keep speaking. You know what I'm saying? So don't ask a question. If you want to answer the question yourself, was it rhetorical? Or do you want me to respond? When Paul was writing these letters, Paul was writing to churches he had set up. He's not sending this letter to someone random. He didn't write this letter and just hope somebody in Corinth picked it up. He sent this to the person who he left in charge in his absence. And he did the same thing in Rome. He did the same thing in Galatia. He did the same thing in all of these churches. So Paul had already found brothers, started to convert them. And he's turning around and he's writing a letter to people that he already taught. So why now? What's understood ain't got to be explained. Why now if I taught you? Do I got to keep reiterating the basics? You know, you know and, why? And somebody, I have, I have the answer for you. And I somebody, I, well, I'm not done answering. And so I don't, like I said, I don't mind letting you back in, but give me the space in the same way I gave you the space. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, so when Paul's doing this, he doesn't have to explain all of this, which is why the unlearned and the unstable wrestle with it. 
because they haven't been introduced to the doctrine. They're babes. They're unlearned. They don't know. The people he's writing to are people he already taught. But the floor is yours. Okay. And, so and, 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 just so you know, after this response, yeah, I'm, I'm going to jump to the other brother. If you want to stay on, I'll come back to you. But I, I do want to give him a shot. All right. Gracias. Uh, you know, thank you for your patience. Like I said, we're brethren here. Um, it's just um, so this is how I could dead this conversation really easily. OK, so when you look at Acts 15. Do we see them being commanded? There's only certain things that they're being commanded when when somebody first comes into this truth, you don't put a burden on them to have to come up with animal sacrifices. You don't put a burden on them to do diverse washings. You don't put a burden on them to um, circumcise themselves necessarily right when they come into the truth. There are certain things that are more important, and that's what they clarify, correct, in Acts 15? Say, say, I'm sorry, say that last part again? Damn. Yeah, just, just run, run, it, run it back, like, you know what I'm saying, a half a sentence. Okay. When somebody is new mm -hmm. to the truth, mm -hmm. There's only you don't got you don't got to say it's slower. I, I just I just wanted you to just repeat that. Yeah, last. I got, there, there's there's only certain things that are paramount for your salvation in the beginning. And that's what was there was a list given to us in Acts 15. Things, pollutions, uh, pollutions of idols, fornication, things strangled, mm -hmm. blood. Though Those were just the basic things. Mm -hmm. Where do you see them giving Leviticus 11 as a part of that list? In okay. Acts 15. It's not there. Okay, no, it's so it's, so when somebody uh, first comes into the truth, mm -hmm. yeah, you tell them, hey, bro, you got to keep the dietary law. But is that what was commanded for a newcomer when they first come in, according to Acts 15? Okay, in that moment, as far as you understand, this specific group of people that he was talking to, no. But now this is this is what I'm trying to explain to you, right? Everybody is different. Let's say somebody let's say somebody came out of um, Jehovah's Witness. Right. And they're trying to come into the truth. They're already not celebrating holidays. But let's say he smokes cigarettes. His battle is not the battle of somebody who came from a Catholic church who's worshiping Mary, who's, uh, you know, doing X, Y, Z, eating whatever they want. Or let's say somebody's coming from Seven Day Adventist background. And they're only eating vegetables or whatever the case may be. And, and they have woman pastors. The things that you have to specifically tailor to that person is different in each one of those different demographics. And that's why I said the way Paul wrote to Ephesians is different than he wrote to Galatia. The way he wrote to Galatia is different than Corinth because everybody has a different battle. So now at that meeting or, or at that council that you're talking about, that was something that came out initially. But as the truth goes on, are you only supposed to stay there or are we supposed to grow just like the disciples did? We're uh, supposed I get you. Yeah, you're supposed to grow. I get you. We're supposed to grow. So that's my point. When you're, but, that's, but that's the point of the scriptures. No, well, the point of the scripture is when you first come in, there's only certain things that you need to focus on first. So when it says to the Jew, I became a Jew and to the Greek, I became a Greek. These Greeks were people who did not know anything. They did not keep the dietary law. So Paul would go and he would hang out with them. That's why they got on him. They say, we see you hanging out with uncircumcised. And then what does he say? He says, whatever is sold in the shambles, you can buy. And ask not for conscience sake. Pursuing to Acts 15. Because there was no rules or stipulations on clean meats or unclean. It was just strangled and no blood. And pollutions of idols, which he actually he 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 went against that. He taught people that if You're... you were strong in the faith, if you were strong in the faith, mm -hmm. and there was nobody around you that was weak. Let's just say there was a brother like Paul. Mm -hmm. There was two of them. They were both strong. He's saying that you can go in there with the Greeks. You can minister unto them. You can eat whatever they give you. Don't ask. So don't ask if it's pork. Don't ask if it's crab or whatever. Just whatever's set before you, you can eat. That's what he said, bro. And that goes against the law. That goes against the Bible. He met, he, he he fucked up, and it's okay because Moses messed up. All of our fathers messed okay. up. 
This and, is, you know, we just got to admit that. We just got to admit that. Th this is another scripture that you wrestle with, like Peter said, because you are unlearned and unstable in this doctrine. And that's and that's why I completely disagree with you. But I want to I want to ask you one question before I jump to this other brother and then I'll come back to you. If somebody comes from the background of Jehovah's Witness and he, they're not celebrating holidays, should I still emphasize and focus on the holidays and idols that they're already not worshiping? Or should I find something else that they need to battle? Uh, something else. So that's the whole point of being a leader. And that's what Paul was over these churches. And that's why these letters are different in these different scenarios, because that's what you do when you're a leader. You weigh the person you're talking to. But hold on one second. Um, and, and I'm going to come right back to you, Azael. All right.